Let's talk a little bit more about plagiarism and how to avoid it. So on the one hand, what is plagiarism? So plagiarism is when you use words, thoughts, or ideas that belong to someone else without giving them credit. In the classroom and in the world of publishing, documenting your information sources is the only way others can tell how thorough and careful you've been in researching your project. If you don't tell your readers where your information has come from, they might think, and many do, that you either made up the information or you stole it. So failing to cite your sources is plagiarism. So we've been talking a lot about citing and how to do it. And certainly citing your sources is uh, the best or the, or the key way to avoid uh, plagiarizing. Now, there are a lot of ways to sort of accidentally plagiarize. And, um, and one of the ways to do that is to not be careful in terms of how you're organizing your information, uh, to not be careful in terms of how you're keeping track of your sources uh, and all the information that you need from those sources to be able to cite them. So as you've seen, there's a fair bit of information that goes into a reference. And um, so it's important as you're going along with your research to be sure that you are documenting um, the sources that you think are going to be helpful to you in writing up your essay or your paper. So if you find an article, for example, um, that you think is going to be helpful in a, in a piece of writing that you're working on, uh, you need to keep track of all this information. This is all the information that needs to go into a reference. So the author name, the title of the article, name of the article, volume number, issue number, date of uh, the issue, um, and, uh, and the DOI number. If you found a book that you think is going to be useful, this is the um, information that you, you tend to need to have. So the author name, title of the book, place of publication, publisher's name, and year of publication. And if you found a website, you need to uh, note the following. The author name, title of the article or the web page, title of the overall website, date of the web page, and the URL. So depending on, there are other types of sources, depending on what the source is, um, the information that you need to cite is going to be slightly different, and that's all going to be in the style, uh, in the style guide that you're that you're using. But you do need to somehow keep track of all this information uh, in order to uh, cite it properly uh, when you're actually going about doing your writing. So you might be able to get some of the above information with a simple screenshot, but be sure you've got all of the elements, and if you don't have it in that screenshot, fill in any blanks. And so again, that information is referred to as bibliographic information or metadata. And that consists of the essential information that identifies the information resource used to inform a research project. So you might not use every single item that you found when you gathered your sources, but having a list of all the sources you've considered will help you keep track of everything you use for your paper. So inevitably, some of the sources that you think you use um, you think you're going to use in your paper, you're, you're going to find that it's actually extraneous and you're, you're not going to use it. But, um, but you know, but if you, it's, it's still useful to have on hand just in case it, it turns out that you do. So as you read each source, um, write down any of the author's ideas or quotes or thoughts that you want to use. And be sure to write down the page numbers if the source provides them. So if you're going to, in particular in cases of direct quote, uh, direct quotation, you're going to need those page numbers to identify exactly where that quotation came from. So when you put your paper together, you will then have all the information you need to properly cite any quote, idea, or thought that came from each source. So it's good to remember that you need to cite it, um, even if it's not a direct quote, if it's an idea that comes from somewhere, you need to cite the source as well. Um, now, you could do all this using, you know, you could do all this using Microsoft Word, or there's note-taking software out there like OneNote, uh, Evernote is another one, uh, and but, but as well, reference management software can help you keep track of all this information uh, as well, and as such, um, are handy tools for for avoiding plagiarism. So again, there's EndNote, Zotero, and Mendeley, and um, we uh, we subscribe uh, to EndNote. Uh, and provide a certain amount of support for EndNote if you want to use that particular program. When do you cite? So once you've gathered all of your information, you need to be mindful about how you use uh, them in your research project. 
there are some very firm rules about what constitutes plagiarism. So if you copy a sentence or a paragraph verbatim exactly from a book, article, website, blog posting, uh, online encyclopedia, uh, anywhere, whether it's online or in print, uh, you must provide the information about the author and the publication, we've mentioned already, uh, in which the sentence or the paragraph appears. So this is known as citing a source. If you use some of the exact phrases in a sentence or a paragraph, even if you're not copying the whole sentence or paragraph, you must cite your source. If you use original information that you have obtained from an interview or conversation with someone, you must cite your source. If you do not use the exact sentence or phrase, but paraphrase it, or use the ideas inherent in the exact sentence or phrase, you must cite your source. If you reprint images, maps, diagrams, charts, or tables, you must cite your source. And if you embed video files or audio files into your work, you must cite your source. So if there's any question in your mind about whether or not you need to cite something, it's just best to err on the side of caution. Nobody's going to tell you, oh, um, you have to you've cited too many sources in you know in your in your essay um, if if so if there's some question in your mind whether or not you ought to cite uh, the source uh, that you're thinking about um, just cite it it's the safest way uh, to go then there's the the paraphrasing um, aspect of, of of avoiding plagiarism um, in in your writing so um, you're not going to be able to quote directly everything. Uh, you're going to need to paraphrase. And um, uh, in some disciplines, you'll only be paraphrasing. There, you, do, you don't really do direct quotation in in certain disciplines. And in others, there'll be some kind of a kind of a limit. Um, you know, sometimes it's an unstated rule that you'd never have more than 10% of directly quoted material. Um, and the rest would be paraphrased. So paraphrasing can be quite difficult. Um, it's, it's not an easy skill, um, and it really takes practice. So um, yeah, it's, it's about putting an idea into your own words. Now, it's important to remember that putting an idea into your own words will inv involve changes to both the structure and the content of whatever it is that you're, that, you know, that you're, that you're citing, whatever, whatever source it is that you're working with. So here we have an example of someone, uh, a case of someone who has attempted to paraphrase something but hasn't really hasn't really done it, um, you know, in a really legitimate way. So uh, this is an example of an attempted paraphrase of a passage from Maguire's *The City*, published published in 1998. So the, the original there says. Russia is unique among European states for having had two capitals during much of its modern life, St. Petersburg and Moscow. The first was founded in 1703 by Peter the Great and became the administrative, political, and cultural capital. In these respects, it displaced Moscow, whose history went back at least 400 years. Have a look at the attempted paraphrase uh, below. And um, you can see that you know, even though many of the words have changed, the actual words, the structure of of the passage is pretty much identical to the original. So you can see, uh, if we go sort of word by word, Russia is unique. That's in the original. Russia is unusual. So unusual has replaced unique. Among, for a, European states, European nation state, for having, as it has had, two capitals, two capital cities. So again, there's been changes to the words. Um, you get the feeling that this person has gone through using an online thesaurus and and swapped out uh, terms for certain synonymous terms. That isn't really good enough to be to be paraphrasing, and and in fact still constitutes a kind of plagiarism, and it's a kind of plagiarism that will actually be be detected by a software like Turnitin.com. So you really need to change the structure of a passage, not just some of the words um, using an online thesaurus uh, to be adequately paraphrasing, um, and and not plagiarizing. So again, while much of the terminology in the above example was changed, the structure remained very similar to the original. So again, looks like somebody's gone through using an online thesaurus and changed out some terms with certain synonymous terms, and that's not really paraphrasing. 
Just to note that many free online paraphrasing tools, the algorithm that's behind it is doing pretty much exactly that. Uh, it's just going through and swapping out some terms with other terms that are sort of synonymous, leaving the structure very much the same. It also tends not to be very good at choosing sort of quasi-synonymous terms. You end up with a, a, a sentence that um, not only is similar in structure and thus is still plagiarizing, uh, but something that just turns into something quite nonsensical, not to tell you the truth. So it's a matter of, 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 of practice makes perfect in terms of, play, of, of, of paraphrasing. Um, there's, no, there's no real sort of magical or technological way around it. Unintentional plagiarism. Uh, so some of it can be sort of disorganization, poor note taking. Um, there's other things. Uh, you might forget where you got a piece of information. So that's the organi organization side. Um, you might lose track of something that has been taken verbatim, thinking it paraphrased instead. So again, poor note taking. Uh, you might have stayed up till 5.30 to write it and printed off the wrong version. So um, that's a kind of a time management thing. If you're writing up your paper at 5.30 in the morning, that probably means it's due at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and uh, it's something you probably should have started earlier. Um, uh, earlier in the semester when you had more time. So um, a lack of intention does not excuse plagiarism. So it was a mistake, but even if it's a mistake, it's still plagiarism. So good note-taking, as noted, is essential, and good study habits, uh, including time management, um, are essential. So, um, you know, avoid writing up in the early morning hours. Uh, don't be in a rush at the last minute, and um, take time to edit and double-check that everything in your final draft is as it should be.